Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Project Dark Knight Horror and I am your host, The Dark Knight. Today we're going to be focusing on ghosts, poltergeists and demons. We're going to take a deep dive into the world of the paranormal. So stick the kettle on and make a cup of tea and let me show you the truth. It's that time again, so close the door, shut the curtains and turn off the lights and go full screen as you get ready to watch. Scary paranormal videos that will 100% set the scene for Halloween. The Hitchhiker For my first case, we're checking back in with Nick Perry, who has a YouTube channel called The Hooker. If you remember, a few episodes ago, I featured Nick's story on my channel. Stereo over there at the f***ing door. Fuck. And since then, the haunting has progressed. In the last few days, I've been communicating with Nick through emails about what's been going on in his home. If you want, pause the screen to read the email from Nick about what he's been experiencing in his home and where he thinks the entity came from. Nick lives in Roseville, California, and one night he found himself driving home through the outskirts on a road called Dyer Lane. Now, apparently this road is said to be well known for the paranormal. Before I got Nick's email, I had never heard of Dyer Lane, but after a quick Google search, I found out that Dyer Lane is haunted. And according to specialists and the paranormal community, Dyer Lane is said to be one of the most active paranormal roads in the region. Part of the reason why Dyer Lane is considered haunted is because the narrow tree-lined rural road has been the setting for dozens of creepy pastors and urban legends and many people throughout the years have spotted ghost hitchhikers and satanic cults. The other reason is because of all the murders and the accidents that have taken place on this haunted stretch of road just outside of Roseville. And this is exactly when Nick was driving one night on the 13th of September 2019. And it was a night he will never forget. It was 2.30 in the morning when Nick noticed a white light in the distance. At first, he thought it was a light coming from a house at the end of a field. But then he noticed the light was moving. As he drove nearer to the light, he started to make out the outline of a body under the light walking towards the road, as if the light was the head. Nick watched this thing walk through a barbed wire fence and stop on the side of the road that he was driving towards. By his own words, Nick was scared and fumbled around for his phone. As he drove nearer to this mysterious moving entity, Nick managed to take this photograph. Now, it's not that clear because it was night time and the car was moving, but on the right hand side of the photo is a black shadow figure moving through the tall grass and where its head should be, you can see a white light, which according to Nick was vastly more brighter 
at the time the photo was taken. As Nick passed this thing, he suddenly felt really weird, as though something was in the back seat behind him. He told me that he got goosebumps and felt cold air behind him on his neck, but he was too scared to look in the car mirror until he got home into the city where there were more people and more lights. But of course, when he did check, there was nothing there in the back seat. That was just over two years ago, and since then, Nick and his family have experienced the paranormal. It all started very subtle, like cold spots and knocks and taps. Then, one evening, Nick's sister and a boyfriend heard a woman's voice. They couldn't make out what was being said because it was muffled, but they definitely heard it. Since then, lights have been seen all over the house, footsteps can be heard on the roof, and shadow figures now roam the house. It took two years for the activity to mature. Remember that thing I always say about our bodies being natural detectors? Well, Nick's instincts are telling him whatever that was on Dial Lane 2.30 in the morning on the 13th of September 2019 followed him home. The locked off camera catches the door closing on its own. Now, Nick is the only person in the house at the time of the recording, so when he hears a loud bang, he runs to check it out. After that thing, whatever it is, shut my door. I have two phones, so I called one, answered it, and put it on speakerphone. And then I left to go get my son because we're barbecuing. And as I'm driving, I heard a noise. So I go, Hello? Hello? Naturally, thinking somebody's maybe home. And. My stereo on my car, which was not on, and it was set to auxiliary, not radio or anything, picked up some weird frequency or radio waves, or I don't even know how that works, but. Oh, hey, you know. Oh, 
Crash doors locked. I don't want to go in there. After hearing noises coming from his bedroom and seeing his bedroom door opening, Nick leaves the house for a couple of minutes. But when he returns to the bedroom, Nick discovers that his cupboard mirror has been cracked. Talk about bad luck. From here on out, the paranormal activity gets worse. Into the goddamn screen. Is that water? God, this fucking thing is. This night, well, I guess it is a window too. God dang, that thing's fucking filthy. Hello? Hello? Oh, Jesus. Smell like I thought I heard uh, somebody like, I don't know, moving stuff around in my sister's room. It sounded like they're home. I thought, but then I heard like a grunting sound. on the couch just asleep so yeah say about that one I don't like these open <laughs> come on bitch Jesus I don't like that should be open crazy me out man I don't know why things. It's like a low rumble. Mm -hmm. uh, fun. Fun. David. <laughs> Funny guys. Dude, hell of a fucking bad. Oh, dude. I don't like that, man. I think I'm gonna go somewhere. Yeah. It must really be creepy living in the house for Nick because he's always on his own. And 
as he's looking out of the bedroom window because of noises behind him. In the reflection, the bedroom door slowly opens, but the house is empty. Then again, the next night, more of the same happens, only this time the activity steps up. Nick hears something moving around in the bedroom next door, and then whatever it is opens his bedroom door. After a quick search, he realizes he's alone, so once again, he leaves the house. The following short clip is very easy to miss, but it's another example that proves this haunting is progressing. What you're looking at is Nick's sister's bedroom, and on the left-hand side of the screen, all of a sudden, a lampshade starts flashing. But in between the flashing, very quickly, a shadow figure can be seen. The following clip was sent to me through my emails from Nick. It shows Nick getting out of the shower when all of a sudden his nose starts bleeding and then something starts to bang on the door. The reason I'm showing you this clip is to see the state of Nick's health. He's not sleeping, he's losing weight fast and now his nose is bleeding. All of these factors point to one outcome. And that is, Nick has an attachment. And this thing is sucking the life out of Nick. And in just one minute, you're going to see what this thing looks like. There are noises out there. A whole bunch of them. It's just getting in the shower. I'm getting in the shower. That's fine, weird. Fine. Fine. I actually pushed stop on my stupid <laughs> camera. And I forgot to turn it sideways, so yeah. So that was gonna be weird. Anyways. Uh fine. I know they're not here. Fine. Hold on a second. Fine. Okay. Sorry. I have to bounce my hands. Fine. Cameras are on now. Not last night. Alright, so this is the picture that I came across. 
And my photos, my Google photos, kind of look like shit. That's not the important part about this. The important part about this is I didn't take the picture. Look what time it was. 4.24 a.m. 4.24 a.m. I was asleep. In fact, that night, the second I hit my bed, I passed the out. My little lamp is on, and my eyes are halfway open. So, like... <sighs> Dude, look at my fucking eyes. The fuck? No way, dude. That's just weird. That is so weird. Dude. That's not me. At least, it wasn't me that took the picture. There's no way. There's no fucking way. I was asleep. I do sleep selfie? Man, that's just... I don't know. This is the most recent upload that Nick has shared on this channel. And, I have to say, it's very worrying. Remember, this entity followed him home from Dyer Road, which is supposedly known for being haunted. And, for two years, it bided its time hiding in the shadows building its strength and over the last few months we've seen a sharp uprise in activity which means it's getting stronger and now it finally revealed itself wow what what are you going in there This is fucking right on. As Nick closes the bathroom door and walks away, he suddenly realizes that he just saw something out of the corner of his eye. So he goes back in for another look and what he sees chills him to the bone. in Nick's home. Like I said, I've been communicating with Nick and I've given him some advice about how to deal with this haunting, but that's little solace when it comes to the paranormal, because unless you've lived it or have experienced it, you'll never fully understand how it feels. Like that feeling when you walk into a room and you feel a cold breeze, or when you feel goosebumps, or that sensation on the back of your neck when their hair stand up on end. That's the feeling. That's the paranormal. I just want to say a massive thank you to all my dark nights. You really helped Nick with a bit of confidence. He made his YouTube channel just for that reason alone. And you really helped. Just when he needed some help and advice, you all came through. And last time I featured him, he was flooded with comments from my dark army. So once again, jump over to his channel to show your love and support. And if it's your first time seeing this haunting, I highly recommend watching his story from the beginning. The name of his channel is called The Hooker. And don't forget, in the comments, yes you guessed it, tell him the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you.
The Last Will and Testament My next case is the essence of Creepy and even though this account has already been making this rounds on TikTok and YouTube I couldn't pass up this opportunity to include this story into my video. Every now and then a story or a series of unfortunate events occur that set things into motion. These are not your average run-in-the-mill stories and every now and then you will come across a channel or an account that is so creepy from the beginning you can't help but feel the very essence of something dark and this is one such tale. The TikTok account the clown doll 5 belongs to a guy called Jacob and very recently his grandmother passed away and in her last will and testament she left Jacob her home and a series of dolls. The house is very creepy and as Jacob walks through the dark corridors and dusty rooms he gets the feeling that something's not quite right. Even though this house was left for him he's not sure he even wants it in the first place. House I inherited from my grandmother. The house can't be sold the way it is because a lot of work needs to be done to it first and that's going to be expensive. It's not clear how his grandmother died but we do know she lived in the house all her life and I do know that her husband died first many years ago leaving Jacob's grandmother on her own and maybe over the years as time passed and age took hold maybe this big house was just too much for one old lady to cope with. Grandmother's old house. She left it for me and when I got here I saw a bunch of cool stuff. And one of the best things is right behind here. Oh yeah. I call him Jeffrey. Grandma left him for me, I guess. Real creepy. Kind of cute though. This is Jeffrey. He's a life-size clown jester, which belonged to Jacob's grandparents. As a child, Jacob remembered staying at his grandmother's house and being terrified of Jeffrey. It would sit in a chair in the corner of his room and no matter what Jacob did, he could never stop being scared of it. But his grandmother loved it. And now, it belongs to Jacob. There's something about clowns that scare people and we've all heard the stories about demonic dolls. So when you combine the two and throw in the fact that it's almost the size of a human, you can't help but be scared. As a child, Jacob was terrified of Jeffrey the Clown. His grandmother would make him sleep in the same room as it. But now, as a man, this didn't bother Jacob one bit and he had no problem with it being in the same room as him. So, imagine his surprise and fear when he was woken up in the middle of the night to banging that sounded as though it was coming from the cupboard. Listen. I just heard knocking from the closet. Oh. 
Jacob wakes up from a deep sleep and starts filming immediately because he just heard banging coming from the cupboard door. So he gets up to check it out. You can tell that Jacob is scared from his panicked shallow breathing and the clown doll isn't helping the situation one bit. I personally couldn't sleep in the same room as a full-size clown doll staring at me while I'm asleep. He gets out of bed and makes his way to the cupboard reluctantly, all the while Jeffrey is sitting on the dresser, looking straight ahead. He opens the cupboard and looks around, but he doesn't find anything out of place. Eventually, he exits the cupboard and closes the door. And that's when things go from bad to downright terrifying. You see, as he closes the cupboard door, he notices Jeffrey is now facing him, which sends him into a full-blown panic mode. The second he realizes the clown doll has moved, another loud bang can be heard from the door opposite him. <laughs> That's enough for Jacob. And before anything else happens, Jacob leaves the house. So, is Jeffrey the clown doll haunted? Well, it certainly looks the part. And the house that was left for Jacob looks creepy and haunted too. One can only imagine what things went on in that house. And why did his grandmother have a doll that big in the first place? I mean, it's not your average sized doll. Hopefully, the next upload that Jacob shares to his account will also have some answers. I've also got in touch with Jacob to find out any background information about the house and where the doll came from. As soon as I have those answers, I will let you know. So click the subscribe button and the post notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I upload. That way, you'll never miss an episode of Project Dark Knight ever again. In the meantime, if you want to see some other spooky creepy dolls, then jump over to Jacob's TikTok account. The name is on screen. But don't forget, tell him the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. Two's Company and three's a crowd. Our next channel is about a well-known couple that have shared their life on social media for the past two years. I've featured them on my channel a couple of times before, but since then, a lot has happened. They appeared on TikTok back in March of 2020, and at first, their account featured videos on relationship and couple stuff, funny skits and challenges, hacks and tips and pranks. And as we watched this young lovable couple, it was plain to see that they loved each other. Ben is a man's man who loves playing football and the Xbox. And Lainey, on the other hand, grew up following through her makeup tutorials and relationship advice. Together, their account was growing and you love them, but everything was about to change because their house was haunted. And even though the activity was quiet at the beginning, slowly by slowly, step by step, the paranormal was taken over. I'm talking about no other than Lainey and Ben. Their first paranormal post was on May of 2020 and it featured Lainey who was at home on her own and there was a cupboard in the bedroom that kept opening by itself. Okay, so just briefly, um, this is a mess, but it, this is my bedroom, and I've just been sat here just scrolling briefly. Now, every now and then, and you can see where it hits. <gasps> oh my God, it's just happened again. This thing, look, let me just show you. There's nothing 
pulling that open. Every now and then I'll come upstairs and this is what's happening. Or every now and then I'll come upstairs and this thing's open. I always shut it again. It's just a storage cupboard on my floor. Okay, I'm free. Oh my God, it's just happened again. Okay, let me shut that again. Let me just show you, there's no, there's nothing tied here. I can show you it all. That's the inside of the cupboard, which I just store boots and stuff for winter. Right, that won't shut anymore. Like I said, the activity was quiet in the beginning, but if you've kept up to them like I have, then you'll know that things have changed. From then onwards, it was a steady stream of paranormal activity. Week by week, month by month, the activity progressed. Right, it's Sunday morning. Hang on, I need to calm down. Oh, so do I. I thought we were being burgled. So did I. It's worse. <laughs> I'd um, rather be burgled. Me too. Uh, Sunday morning, we were just chilling out upstairs in bed and we just heard loads of noise. Oh, look, there's a fork on the oh, floor. No, look at the state of the place. Um, and this is what we've come down to. Look, the cupboard's in an absolute fucking <laughs> shit state. Hang on, I'm just gonna... Oh my God. Did you see that? Oh my God! Fuck off. Ben, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so that post was uploaded in June 2020, three months after they first announced that their house was haunted. Basically, the more communication and acknowledgement they fed it, the stronger the entity got. That Sunday morning, they heard a loud crash and came downstairs to see their cupboard contents thrown all over the floor. And this was the first time that they witnessed firsthand the furniture moving. Half of the community believed them that their house was indeed haunted, but the other half thought it was fake. But soon, these allegations would be put to rest. I've always tried to explain things in my videos and I know my videos are long, but that's because I like to include as much information as possible. I've always said from the beginning, never communicate with the paranormal, never talk to it or never ask it to make a noise or move an object and never acknowledge it because once you start talking to the entity and once it knows you can see it, it will hound you. Also, by acknowledging it, you're giving it power and substance. It says, does it feel like a good or a bad spirit? And what energy does it give off? I think if there's no threats. Or... Nah, like it's never touched us or hurt us. Like, so I don't think there's anything bad about it. I think if anything, it might be like a relative because like it's not harmful to us. No. So it's not like bad in that kind of way. Did you, did you just see that? Just see what? The cupboard door just opened. <laughs> right. Let's watch this back. Ben and Lainey acknowledged their haunting in a big way, even naming their ghost. And its name was David. And from that moment onwards, the paranormal activity in Ben and Lainey's house and life amped up. You gonna speak or not? Shall yeah. I do it? All right. That door was like, it was shut, but not on the latch and it's just opened. So, um, yeah. Like, now you, now you've got I've got a, a load of grief in the comments because I sent you <laughs> to go and deal with the, this cupboard door and now that door's triggered, so, and I'm not, I'm not down for that. <laughs> what in the fuck? I don't know, that's just scared the shit out of me. What the fuck? People are going to say that there's something attached to that. Look under the fucking table as well, showing there's no fucker in here. I'm not down for that. That's a dishwasher under the, well, you know, unit, washing machine. Where could somebody be hiding? Oh. That was me. Oh God, you can't even see up there. Someone will still come up with. Now, I can't show you every paranormal post from Lenny and Ben, cause we'll be here all week, but what I'm going to do is show you how it progresses every month until we arrive at the present day. Okay, um, we're in the middle of family quiz night and we just heard a massive like... Thud? Th like, 
load of noise anyway upstairs so you know, this is a serious <laughs> time what the fuck? Put some lights on, Ben. How could that have fallen over? Is it broken? I don't know, but... Wait, how's that over? Yeah, this is on a tripod, and that's... There's no way that would have moved, but... Well, that was actually, like, tucked right out the way. Oh, thank God it's not broken. Well, that's alright, but more to the point... <laughs> hey! How did it fall? I mean, it could have been the wind, but... That doesn't explain how the tripod fell. Because the tripod... They named their poltergeist David, and it seemed that it preferred Lainey over Ben. At first, it was a bit of a gimmick, something to record for their channel. But later, it was anything but fun. Objects were now being moved and broken. Not just light objects, but as the haunting progressed, so did the strength of the ghost moving large, heavy objects. Are you seeing this? Get your camera. Oh, it's on. Looks like we're going to be here for a while. Can someone do a copy? Can you do it again? Oh my God. Turn the light on, please. Turn it on. Oh. Are they going off separately? Yeah, they are. The okay, that'll do, switch. thanks. The light switch is over, over there. Yeah. This is actually absolutely bonkers, like... <gasps> and then, back in August of 2020, we all witnessed when Lainey was woken up. Remember, up until now, the activity had been not that bad. The odd object would move here and there, but on this night, while Ben was at work, Lainey was asleep on the couch when something woke her up. She recalls feeling a breath in her ear and hearing a hiss. So of course she started talking to her viewers on TikTok to help calm her nerves, and that would have been the end of that. But this spirit, called David, had now grown strong enough to actually Touch Lainey. Watch. I just need to talk to something. <laughs> um, I'm freaking out a little bit. So I've been lay here having a nap because Ben's at work. That's not why I had a nap, but Ben's at work. And I was woken up to like, like a <sighs> sound right in my ear, really loud. And don't know what it is. The fuck? Feeling that is one thing, but feeling and seeing it move is something else altogether. And for the first time ever, there was fear on Lainey's face. And then the couple took things to a whole nother level. They started using a widget board to ask questions and to communicate. They wanted to know the age of the ghost and how he died and how many spirits were in their home. Turns out the most dominant spirit in their house was a spirit called David who died on the land that the house was built on when he was 61 years old. Slowly by slowly, day by day, the entity started taking an interest in Lainey. A few days later, after using the widget board, the energy in the house started to change. Lainey was woken up from a deep sleep at 12 minutes past 12 midnight and got the feeling that something was wrong. So she started recording on her phone. Ben didn't hear anything. In fact, he was still fast asleep next to her. Suddenly, from the dark quiet, she hears a metallic click from the bottom of the stairs. It was the sound of the door lock opening. And then, to Lainey's horror, she heard the sound of footsteps coming up the stairs towards her. I counted seven to eight footsteps. Watch the first part of the video and let me know down in the comments if I'm right.
Oh. During these hauntings, it's common for the homeowner to smell things that are unfamiliar to them like perfume or aftershave. Sometimes even the smell of tobacco has been documented in some of these cases. Even flowers like lavender have been documented in hauntings all across the world. None of these are any reason to worry. It's just the ghosts or the spirits going about their business, most of the time replaying their last moments on a loop otherwise known as a residual haunting. But every now and then, a homeowner or an investigator will come across another type of smell, one that is not common, but one that is very troubling than any other. And one as a homeowner or a paranormal investigator will hope to never come across. You see, in cases where the spirit that resides in the house is evil or demonic, the atmosphere secretes a different, more pungent aroma. Some describe it like rotten meat, others like rotten eggs. I've smelled this before, and for me, it's reminiscent of gunpowder, or the smell of a firework after it goes out, like sulphur. So I'm just jumping on here because quite often in our house we'll get the kind of smell of like perfume we've had the smell of cigarettes kind of wafting around the house neither of us smoke um we've had the kind of smell of smoke and things like this um but tonight we've got this really bad smell of like really stinking egg like i don't know how else to describe it like it's like putrid yeah proper bad now i definitely know it wasn't me laney's claiming it wasn't her it wasn't me <laughs> but we just want to know, could this be something paranormal? Is this something paranormal? Like, you guys are the experts in this. We don't really have a clue. So let us know, is this something, is this something common in haunted houses? And then, over the next year, the activity progressed step by step. Lainey, Lainey. What? Can you hear that? I thought that was you. No? I thought that was you in the kitchen. No? Weird. David, man, I'm actually getting pretty sick of your shit, you know. Like, the amount of not. King Christ. Oh, fuck's sakes, man. No, shut the fuck up. Can you repeat this? Oh. It's now been a year since then, and the good news is, Lainey and Ben have now had a baby. The bad news is, the paranormal activity is still strong. Fuck me. <sighs> what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Fucking the doors banging. Get the camera with me. It's on a massive fucking tripod. Oh my lord. The house is a shithole as well, Lane's gonna kill me for showing. 
when you're moving, we are moving in... Did you hear it? Did you, did you hear that? It sounded like the chair. Did you hear that? It sounded like the chair moving on the floor. Let me see. And then, from February this year, the paranormal activity started to get aggressive. The spirits in Lenny and Ben's home have now become so strong and aggressive over the last few months that even dinner time is now prone to activity. So, me and Lenny, we were just eating our dinner. And um, this glass right here came flying out of my hand, made a mess on the floor, and has absolutely ruined dinner. And can I just say, Ben didn't drop it. No, you you claimed I dropped it. I thought you did. Well, hopefully the camera up there might have picked up what happened. I'm hoping it did, because I'm telling you right now it was pulled from my hand. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, bless them. <laughs> yeah, it was just thought he was just like, up and down. What did you do? So we've caught up to the present day. I know it was a bit of a long one, but I wanted to show you the situation from the beginning to the present day. As you might know, baby Apollo is about one years old now, and he's starting to walk and talk. And even more worrying, they've seen him on a few occasions talking to someone or staring off into the distance. So Lainey and Ben have decided, after almost three years, to pack up and move home. Well, so what do you think? This is one of those rare channels where I don't think we need to vote whether the paranormal activity is real or fake because there's just so much activity and footage, not to mention they've invited psychics and mediums into their home. We've now come round full circle with Lainey and Ben and baby Apollo. Who knows what the future holds for this young, lovable family. I just want to say thank you to Lainey and Ben for sharing their lives with us these last few years. I wish them all the happiness and good fortune to come as they start their next chapter in their life. I didn't include all of their videos because there were just far too many and I didn't have the time. But if you want to watch their story from the beginning, 
then jump over to their TikTok account or YouTube channel, the names on screen. And don't forget, when you get there, tell them the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. Did you see it, Gran? The next video we're analyzing comes from a YouTube channel called Flying Alucha. The creator and the owner of the channel is a young man called Nathan from the UK. Nathan has published over 460 odd videos, ranging from all manner of topics, from anime and games, shopping and comedy, movies and tech, and blogging. In amongst all these videos, there is one video that stands out. And this is the five and a half minute video that we're going to be analyzing today. The reason I've chosen this video is because it's different to all his other videos. This video is set in his grandmother's house and it has paranormal elements to it. And since the shooting of this video, sadly Nathan's grandmother has passed away peacefully in her sleep. Nathan always knew there was paranormal activity at his grandmother's house, but he was always too scared to stay. But this year was different. You see, Nathan is now getting older and his grandmother was ill, so he was staying over for longer periods of time. So this evening, three years ago, a few days before Christmas, Nathan decided to start recording. And this is what he caught. Watch. Wow, I'm... You don't really see anything. What the hell was that? Jeez, someone just moved it. Did a bang. Jesus Christ. Look, you can see this is like. You can see there's nothing on it. God, it must have been heavy to be able to move that. God, the hell? What's that? Santa fell. What did that fall on? It fell from there. What did it break? Nothing, nothing's broken. It just fell from there. It was, it was literally there. I don't want to put it back in case it drops again. It was just up there and it literally fell. Shut up, stupid. See, she don't believe me. <sighs> Weird. Nanny, did you see that? What? The card just fell. What card? That one, that one there. Didn't see it because yeah, you haven't been watching. So she just ignores it. She thinks there's nothing going on. Not this is the time to play a bit of Nathan. This is, a, this is supposed to be a party tonight. 
Oh, I don't remember that moving. Oh, I don't remember that moving. Did you see that? No. stupid games. Not stupid games. They're stupid. Stop it, Nathan. Stop. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing anything. I told you I'm not doing anything. You're not funny. You're no, not I'm not funny. funny. Funny at all. Well, my cards have got put up. Jesus Christ. Understand. Nan, you sure you didn't you oh, didn't say up, that? Nathan. Shut up, don't talk to me about it. I don't want, I don't wanna know about it. I'm not interested. She gets scared about these things. I, I told her I didn't want to My uncle's just gone out, but it's just me and my nan. Well, I said something was going on, didn't I? The video starts as Nathan was walking down the stairs. He hears a strange noise which prompts him to start recording. As he points the camera on a crucifix, amazingly, it moves. He shows there are no strings attached to it, and then it moves again which scares him a little bit. Now, it really takes a lot for us Brits to lose our composure. We're usually cool, calm and collected, which is why sometimes this video can look a little bit fake. But I've watched it over and over again, and I can't find any funny business, which is why I need your help in deciding. The only other person in the video is his late grandmother, who is in the living room busying herself with her knickknacks. Nathan joins his gran in the living room and scans all around. Just then, about four feet away from him, on top of a shelf, a Santa Claus figure either falls or is pushed. Either way, it falls to the ground and Nathan's gran asks about it. Nathan explains that Santa fell off his shelf and his gran looks at him in shock. What the hell? What's that? Santa fell. For some reason, Nathan's grandmother tells him to shut up and calls him stupid. This happens a couple of more times in the clip and she chooses to ignore the activity that's happening all around her. Another reason why Nathan never addressed the issue of the paranormal before was because his grandmother didn't believe in him. Even when something happened right in front of her, she still chose to ignore it. Nathan continues to scan the room from side to side, and just then, a Christmas card falls off the piano. The card is at least five feet away, and we don't hear any blowing or breath 
to make him fall. He even takes a few steps back, which in my opinion is the correct response and makes it look all the more genuine. Once again, he asks his nan if she saw it and yes, he guessed it once again, she ignores it. Either she's scared of the paranormal or she didn't want to admit it or she thinks Nathan was lying. Which one do you think it was? It's hard to tell from this angle because it does look real, but I'll let you decide. Just after Nathan's grandmother tells him off and tells him he's not funny, something happens which for me is a game changer. You see, as he's arguing with his grandmother, a photograph of a child falls off its perch, but it's the way it falls off that caught my eye. You see the photo doesn't just fall, it spins before landing on the ground. And look at the angle of the camera. If there was a string attached, he would have to be standing right in front of it to pull it. Not to mention that his gram would probably tell him off. Also, again, I've watched the sequence in different lights and filters and I couldn't find any strings. Now, I'm the first to put my hands up if I made a mistake. So, if there's anyone out there that has better editing software than me that can tell if this is real or fake, then please let me know down in the comments. Nathan says that his gran was scared of the paranormal and because she lived on her own, that's why she didn't want to talk about it, which seems feasible. But of course, the last word goes to you. Do you think this video is real? Or do you think Nathan's pulling our leg? Don't forget, this is the only video like this on this channel. So include that in your decision. If you want to analyze the video further, jump over to his YouTube channel. It's called Flying Olucha. But don't forget, when you get there, in the comments, tell him the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. If you've seen something strange, creepy or amazing and you've captured something paranormal on camera or maybe you're a paranormal investigator and you need some help to get your content out there or you might be unlucky enough to live in a haunted home and you need some help and answers because you think you're all alone. Well, you're not. Project Dark Knight is here for you. So... Send in your videos, clips, links, channels, accounts, photos, stories and absolutely anything to do with the paranormal and horror to Project Dark Knight. The email is on screen. Thank you. The Update of Dino Nuggets. Every now and then, a story, a case or a haunting comes along which stands out from the rest. A case that rewrites what we think we know about the paranormal. A haunting so real and frightening that no music, special effects or filters are needed because the haunting itself is enough. And it's the stuff of nightmares. Every now and then, a story comes around that sticks in our heads and hearts and gives us the real meaning of the word terror. And this next case is all of the above and more. I'm talking about the haunting of Dino Nugget 741 and this is his long-awaited update. The last time we heard from Dino Nuggets, also known as JB, he had moved from his house that we all watched for months on our TVs, laptops and phones to another new build far away in the desert of Colorado. 
the move wasn't something that JB took lightly. In fact, he didn't even want to move in the first place. But after two years of being terrorized in his own home and being woken up all hours of the night and being stalked in his own house, he finally gave in. But as you're about to find out, things didn't go according to plan. Even after careful consideration, planning and cleansing, the power of the paranormal was just too strong. This is the story and journey of one man's struggle against the forces of darkness. Just when he thought the horror and the terror was over, evil reared his ugly head again just as he was planning a new life in a new home and getting ready to write a new happier chapter. The claws of the paranormal pulled him back into the dark void. Dino Nuggets appeared on social media on the 26th of January 2021. And ever since that day, I followed his story every step of the way because his haunting was unlike any other case before or after it. Minus one or two cases like Sabia L and the Ghost of Carmel, Maine, who, incidentally, I will be doing a deep dive about very soon, but more about that later. Dino Nuggets appeared on our screens and straight away to the initiated we knew that this haunting was different. Just like any other haunting before his, the paranormal activity started slow with taps and bangs and objects moving. But very soon after that, things changed. The speed of the haunting, the strength of the activity and of course the entity itself was like nothing we had ever seen up until then. Don't forget, now these things are normal to us, we see them in most hauntings, but back then, this was all new. I've been researching and studying the paranormal for some time now, and I'm always on the lookout for anything that can further my paranormal portfolio, and I learned a lot from this haunting. Jay decided to listen to what a lot of people said, and that was to move home. His house wasn't safe anymore, and he was a hostage to fear. So, he decided he would start to pack and get the ball rolling on moving. But in doing so, Jay made a big mistake, and it's not his fault. Emotions play a big role in our life, especially when it comes to hauntings and the paranormal. Instead of quietly packing over a set period of time, Jay let his emotions get the better of him and he taunted the entity telling it that he was leaving and made it angry.
you want me now, man, take me. I'm leaving. I'm tired of this. Let's have it out, man. I'm leaving. Just let me get my and go. When Jay taunted this thing and said he was leaving, it got angry. It was the first time that Jay had the power and it felt good. He was now in the driving seat and he was now in charge and it was the entity that was hurting. But as it goes, this was to be one of his biggest mistakes. And then Jay left. He packed up and drove away and started a new life in the mountains of Colorado. Jay settled into his new home and, truth to be told, life was good at the beginning. What's going on everybody? It's JB. Uh, just giving you all a brief update. I uh, moved to the desert. I took a, a lot of advice over this last couple of years from all of you guys, and I greatly appreciate it, but I've been doing a lot of podcasting, and I've jumped around from place to place to place, taking uh, y'all's advice, trying to find a new spot, did a lot of research, moved into a place that had no background, everything solid. And I spent months bouncing back and forth. I got rid of everything. 
new clothes, new bed, new bed frame, new couches, new rugs. I kept the paintings because they're expensive. <laughs> they are. And uh, got rid of everything else. Tim, being a, a good, solid partner, did come through the house and, you know, went through some stuff with me and uh, took some stuff. Um, but as most of you expected, I, I have another video. I appreciate all the comments and all the advice, guys, but I think we're just getting started and it's getting worse. And it's starting off the exact same like it did everywhere else. So if you're interested watching the video, it'll be after this clip. Um, check out our podcast. It'll be at the end of the video. I can't just do paranormal things anymore. I've been trying to clear my mind and honestly can deal with life and dealing with moving in a new area. I live in the desert now. I moved from the mile high city to a desert and this happens. So feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for everybody who's stuck around and uh, we'll let the video begin. And God bless everyone. <laughs> Hello? Goddamn box is moved. That noise is coming from up here. I bought everything new, guys. Nothing in this house except some paintings.
don't hear anything down here. This is how it starts, everybody. Everybody told me to move, I did. Any cursed items, I got rid of everything. <laughs> Great advice, you two. Hundred grand, I didn't want to spend. Did you see something, buddy? Starts with the banging. Hey, bud. Cat room. See, guys, nothing in here is the same. I started completely fresh. Hello? Hello? No, 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 no. Hello? Hello? What do you want? What the f***? Storm's closed.
come on. No, 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 not again, not again. What do you want from me? For the love of God, leave my house. Leave me alone! Yes. Not so long ago, I got an email about this and wasn't allowed to let anybody know. Jay is now sure that the entity that made his life a living hell has followed him. He doesn't know how or why, but Jay is really fed up. Even after all the precautions he took and buying all new things and starting fresh all over again, the power of the paranormal is just too much. I don't know if taunting the entity made it angry enough to follow Jay or if Jay clearly had an attachment and the house was just powering the entity. There's still so many questions that I just don't have the answers to. But I'm so sorry, Jay. I really was rooting for you, mate. But instead, chapter two has now begun. And because it's a new house, a new area, and a new beginning, the activity has started all over again. I'll be here to give him all the love and support that he might need. Also, in this trying time of need, I'm asking all my Dark Knights to jump over to his YouTube channel and let JB know he's in our hearts and minds. So, if you want to watch Dino Nugget 741's story from the beginning, the link is below. Jump over to his YouTube channel or his TikTok account. The name is on screen. And when you get there, don't forget, send them a comment. Tell them the Dark Knights sent you. Thank you. If you've made it to the end, then I salute you. You prove that you're a true fan of horror. So remember, if you're interested in ghosts, poltergeists and demons, haunted houses, rituals and randonautica, urban exploring, animal attacks and strange dark mysteries, then Project Dark Knight Horror is the channel for you. You know that age old saying, what goes around comes back around. Well, I'm a true believer in good karma. So, if you subscribe to the channel and click the like button, you'll be doing a good deed for me. And in turn, you'll be due a big fat lump of good karma. Why not join Project Dark Knight on my private Facebook group? Here, you'll be in great company. We've got lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds, from lots of different countries. But we all have one thing in common, and that's our love for horror. So click the link in the description section, and I'll let you in. This production was brought to you and funded by my Patreons who go that extra mile. Their names are Dawson Lip, Julie Six, Andrew M. Gross, Steve Launt, Laura Rohde, George Lopez, Cookie I Don't Know, Countess Monette, Greasy Cox, Julie Duncan, Donna Sayers, D. Michael Smith, Catherine Murphy, Sean Squillis, and Giovanni Dad. It's thanks to people like you who make my dreams into a reality. And because of your kindness and generosity, I am able to make content that I am passionate about and do what I love. So, from the bottom of my heart to all my dark nights, it's thanks to amazing people like you that keep the engines running at Project Dark Knight. And always remember, you've been watching Project Dark Knight Horror, and I am the Dark Knight. Signing off. Peace. Don't ever laugh at
as the years goes by for you. Maybe the next to die, they wrap you up in a big white sheet. From your head down to your feet, they put you in a big black box and cover you up with dirt and rock.